Hey guys, and welcome to this After Effects uh, post-production green screen tutorial type video. And like I said before, my computer is barely fast enough to run After Effects and uh, my other editing software to actually make the videos, so uh, I couldn't be running a screen capture software uh, to be recording my screen as I did it. But in this case, I took a bunch of pictures, and so we'll be looking at those. I actually, I think this way is a little bit better, so you can pause the video when you need it, look at the screen, compare it to your screen, and all right, let's get started. So in this first screen, I'm just showing you that I'm using After Effects, but you could really use any video editing software that has the chroma keying capability, such as Premiere, uh, Sony Vegas, uh, even video pad, I mean, it's it's still gonna work. So, I'm using After Effects, so if you're using After Effects, that you can follow along pretty easily. So, just open it up, that's what it's gonna look like. I'm using CS 5.5. So, you can drag your footage in, which I did, or you can go File, Import, and import your footage from there. As you can see, those are all the files that I took uh, when I filmed this. I did it all in one day, actually within a couple hours. So, so I dragged it in, and it's over on the left side in the project area. Then I dragged it down onto, it's the third icon from the left at the bottom of the project tab. It's a little movie type thing, and when you drag it on there, it makes a new composition from your footage. It's the uh, exact length, uh, frame rate's exactly the same, as well as the uh, frame size. So that's really good to start off. Next, on the right side, I opened up the effects and presets tab. If it's not open, uh, go up to workspace. Uh, where mine says standard, switch it to standard, and it should be right over on the right side. So now I just cut the footage so that uh, I'm actually in front of the green screen and not turning on the camera. So now that we're there, uh, we're going to start into the actual uh, editing part of it. So let's do that. So now I grabbed the masking tool, which is at, up at the top bar, it looks like a little pen. And when you're using this, you want to be sure that you have your footage selected. If you don't, you're just going to be making a shape. Uh, so we want to make a mask around the green screen area. So to do that, we have to have the mask tool with our footage selected. That's very key. <laughs> I learned the hard way a couple times doing that. So then we mask it all out. There's a nice little arrow to that. and basically want to get the area around where I am on the green screen and we want to max or mask out all the other areas that are not the green screen so we can get an easier and better key. So now we move to uh, a different part in the footage and uh, if you click on your footage uh, down below and you click uh, and you click on your footage and you press M it'll open up the mask and then mask path and click on the little keyframe thing there and you want to scrub, scrub through your footage and see if your hands go outside where you masked. If they do, move it and be sure the keyframe thing is turned on. If it's not, uh, you're, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to be at the last one that you had marked. So I, again, I learned that the hard way, making the first episode of Beast Mode, which probably is out by now, but check that out. <laughs> As you can see, my hands moved up and the mask was cutting that off, so I had to move it up. And as you can see, I have a couple different keyframes in there. Uh, so, And you don't have to do it every frame. If you go every couple frames, it'll animate it for you, but you definitely want to go back and go through them just to make sure that it animated them correctly. So I'm to the end, cut it off a little bit, and everything was working good. <laughs> uh, you can probably hear my sister in the back background. So then I just went to a random frame, and in my effects and presets tab, I searched key light, which we're going to be using to key it out. And I believe in a in Adobe Premiere, it doesn't have key light; it has uh, just color key. Uh, 
I'm not sure how good that'll work. Uh, I, I would think it would work good because, I mean, it's Adobe. And I know in Sogi, Sogi, Sony Vegas, uh, it's uh, the chroma keying tool. It's all right, but you really have to mess with the settings to make it work good. And I mean, that's the same with anything. For key light, uh, it's, holy cow, it's good. So we drag that onto our footage. Uh, so then we go over to the effects controls on the left side and it has key light selected 1.2 and next we're going to select uh, the green that we want and in order to do this in order to get it as good as I did on the first try here's a really awesome trick so grab the eyedropper tool where it says screen color with a U I'm not sure why it's a U I don't get that it must be European or something but anyways click that and press shift hold down shift and get all the green around your footage and when you do that it'll get all the green and it'll give you an amazing key the first time I mean it's not going to be perfect perfect but it's going to be way better than if you just select one color because your green screen is going to be varying in colors of green so by holding down shift it gets all of those and you can get a really good key so next you're going to want to click from where it says view, it'll say final result, you want to change that to screen map. So you can see it'll give you a white and a black, and you want the black to be pitch black and the white to be as bright a white as you can get it. And you want the white area to be completely white, which is you standing in front of the green screen, and you want the green screen to be all black. So in order to adjust this, we go into screen gain and screen balance, just adjust that to your liking. And as you can see in this picture, my, the edges are a little bit fuzzy, that's because the screen pre-blur is up a little bit too high. And remember, when you're doing a green screen, you want to have a sharp edge, because that's the whole point of a green screen. It's not going to look realistic if you have a blurry edge around you. So you want to keep that edge nice and sharp without having too much green on it. So next, after we did that, it's looking pretty good. Uh, scroll down into screen mat, open that up, and you're going to want to go into clip black and clip white and adjust those so you get it nice and good like I did. And then from there, just minimize that and search for simple choker. This step's optional. Honestly, after looking at this footage again, I think I probably would have left it as is. Uh, but if you still have a little green outline around your person, then go into Simple Choker. And really, you'd want to do the complete opposite of what I did. I raised it up, and that's choking it, so you get it down a little bit. But in this case, I raised it up. Basically, uh, what the Simple Choker is going to do is going to choke the edges, obviously. And when you lower it down, it's going to blow the green up around you. So then you go into effects and presets, go into color key, and get that green that's around the edges out. So that's the real point of the simple choker. In this case, probably wasn't needed, but I wanted to show that you can use that. Next up, I brought in uh, some of the backgrounds that I want to be using, and they're from TGN. Uh, on one of the George shows, he gave you the 3D set that he uses, so I thought, why not use it? So, drag that in, I moved my footage down a little bit, there was a little bit of a gap. And <laughs> uh, interesting picture, so yeah, just show and drag it down. And then in the effects and presets, you're going to want to search up curves. So we're going to drag curves onto that. Now what curves is, it's color correction, but it's the basic of the basic. And color correction is two things. When most people think about it, they're thinking of making it like for a certain, like a film look or something like that. Well, the basic color correction, which you use curves for, is to get it so that your foreground, middle ground, and background all match up. And that's what we're going to be using this for. So the foreground, which is the desk and the laptop, and the background, which is the couch, those are all already matched up with the color. But as you can see, the middle ground, which is me, it's not matched up. I'm a little bit too red, and so we go into... Oh, yeah, I just dragged some background footage from an old video. Uh, but anyways, back into curves. Go into blue, raise the blue up a little bit. As you can see, that's not the best. So we bring up the green just a little bit and bring down the red just a tad. Next, we go into RGB, which is going to adjust everything, which uh, adjusts... The bright so it makes it a lot brighter and the dark so it makes it a lot darker. 
So you can adjust those depending on your footage. There's no really standard adjustment for those. It depends completely on, on your footage and your background. So we adjusted that. It looks pretty good. Not the best. Probably should have made it a little bit darker. Uh, but still pretty decent. And I think we're just about done, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah, for to render, uh, this is definitely important to get a small and fast render size. So go into composition, add to render queue, queue my bad, and go into render queue down below. And you want to click on where it says output module. You want to click on lossless, and that'll bring up this thing. Where it says format, you want to change that to H. Dot two six four. This is going to give you a nice small file size. Uh, it's going to be MP4. Then on audio output, if you have any audio, you definitely want to check that and make it to the settings that you want. Then you go to format options, and this is definitely definitely important for a low file size. Profile to high, level to five point one, total bit rate to five, and max. Maximum bit rate to 9. If you don't have it at that, it's going to be a huge file size and you're really not going to enjoy it. So then click where you want it to be and then click render and it'll start rendering. I actually didn't render out this clip because it was so long and I didn't really want to do that. But anyways, that's pretty much the final result. Uh, if I would have to critique it, uh, my color correction not that great. Need to be a little bit darker. Uh, but overall, I think pretty good. The key was pretty good. I probably didn't need the simple choker. Uh, if you want to check out me actually using my green screen and actual uh, footage, uh, check out uh, my new show, Beast Mode, on my main channel, which will be coming out once a week or once every two weeks. So thanks for watching, guys. And done. Yep. <laughs> See you next time.